This is my wireless power transfer system that I built during a previous video. And as you can see, it still works perfectly fine, at least according to its capabilities. Because even though the coils were able to transmit a bit of power, the overall power losses were huge and thus the efficiency pretty horrible. Back then I said that the loss factor, who is partly responsible for the power losses, is dependent on the coupling factor multiplied by the coil quality. And while we cannot do much about the coupling factor, I tried increasing the coil quality by playing around with different amounts of windings, coil diameters and even copper wire types. And the experiment results clearly showcased a noticeable difference. But sadly, I never got to determine a numerical value for the coil quality, which definitely would have been helpful. But that is about to change in this video, because being able to properly measure the most important characteristics of a coil is not only super important for such wireless power systems, but in general for every application where inductors are being used with a higher frequency. So let's find out all about it and possibly create my best wireless power transfer coil so far. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Elector, who not only publish the Elector magazine, which comes with awesome articles about everything related to electronics, but they also recently launched a new LCR meter which will help me later during the video and save me a lot of time while experimenting. So feel free to have a look at it on their website and while you're at it, you might be interested in checking out their project archives with over 1000 DIY electronics projects. All you need is a membership, which you can get quite a bit cheaper by clicking the link in the video description. First off, you might be asking yourself why I'm making such a big deal of coil measurements. I mean, if you want to design such an awesomely efficient switch mode power supply, then all you would have to do is to follow the given formulas to calculate the required inductance, get yourself a fitting inductor with this value, solder it in place and it just works. And yes, because the power supply uses a rather low switching frequency of only 80 kHz, the inductor still behaves just like an inductor. <coughs> Foreshadowing! But if we look at other power supplies, we can easily determine that they are utilizing way higher frequencies. In this example around 1.4 MHz which the inductor apparently does not mind though, because it's still doing a job just fine, right? To find that out, I desoldered it from its PCB and hooked it up to my function generator and oscilloscope in combination with a shunt resistor, to measure not only the voltage across it, but also the current flowing through it. And by adjusting the frequency to the previously utilized 80 kHz, we can see that the current waveform is lagging with a phase angle of around 89 degrees in comparison to the voltage, which is a completely normal behavior for inductors. But if you're super confused right now, then I would encourage you to watch my video about impedance, to truly understand what is going on here. Because now I'm slowly cranking up the frequency to the higher 1.4 MHz. And as you can see on the oscilloscope, our phase angle decreased just a tiny bit. The reason is that there exists no ideal inductor which only comes with inductance. Every inductor also comes with a parasitic resistance, which is partly the resistance of the wire, and also a parasitic strike capacitance, which represents mostly the capacitance between the coiled windings. This value is of course super tiny, but it is still there, which means there exists a frequency at which the inductive reactance equals the capacitance reactance. This frequency is the so-called self-resonant frequency, and above it the inductor will actually start acting more like a capacitor than an inductor, while below this frequency the inductive characteristic overweights. But don't worry, commercial power inductors usually have a high self-resonance frequency, which in the case of the coil we had a look at so far, seems to be around 12 MHz. And it was actually kind of funny seeing the phase angle suddenly jumping around near this frequency. 
But getting back to the point, because if you start winding coils by yourself for whatever reason, then you can quickly create a coil that reaches the self-resonance faster, and thus it becomes pretty much useless, which could have been avoided by properly measuring the inductor characteristics for its different application frequencies. And needless to say, by gathering all these values, we can easily convert them into the coil quality that I'm after. To do that, we can use an LCR meter, which spits out the impedance, phase angle, inductance, resistance and even the coil quality itself. But sadly, most LCR meters only do that for certain frequencies, which is of course not the frequency range I'm interested in for my wireless power transmission. So we have to do our own measurements, for which I can use almost the same setup as before. Except that this time I'm using two passive probes and a 200 ohm shunt resistor, which I hooked up to the coil and oscilloscope slash frequency generator according to this schematic. The used method is called IV, aka current voltage method, in which we have to measure the current and voltage amplitudes and the phase angle between them. So as a first example, I went with a frequency of 120 kHz and used the functions of my oscilloscope to measure the amplitudes and phase angle. Now you might be asking yourself how we can turn these values into those, and for that we can make our life easier and skip the complicated derivations by simply following these formulas from the Tektronix website, where you can also find a guide about my used measuring methods. And after inserting all the values, we get results that look like this of which we are mostly interested in the resistance and inductive reactance. Because by simply dividing the one by the other, we finally get my long desired coil quality value for 120 kHz, which by the way is the frequency I've been using so far for my wireless power setup. And do not worry, negative influences like the proximity effect, skin effects or the parasitic capacitances are all included in such a measurement, and we basically now only have to repeat it with different frequencies in order to determine the coil quality sweet spot. So after doing tons of tests and calculations, I was able to plot this graph which clearly shows us that the coil quality sweet spots cannot be found at a higher frequency, which was my expectation, but between 50 to 60 kHz. That is why I added a 330 nanofrag capacitor to the coil pairs, which in combination with their known inductance should give us a new resonant frequency of around 57 kHz. And after trying out this newly fine-tuned system, I am happy to report that science didn't let us down, and I was not only able to achieve a bigger distance of 70cm, but also a bigger short circuit current of more than double than before. Awesome! But of course, this was not enough for me yet, because I still had lots of lids wire laying around, which should keep the skin effect losses to a minimum. And last time I tried using it, I was simply too dumb to think of simply putting three wires in parallel in order to decrease the copper resistance. So I did just that, in a procedure that was almost three hours long, and created two promising looking coils. But honestly speaking, I was not in the mood of repeating all the long measurements and calculations from before. And luckily I didn't have to, because Elector sent me one of their new 2 MHz LCR meters, whose test frequency you can fine adjust, and it tells you all the important values right on its main screen. So after unpacking all the parts, assembling them with a couple of screws and wires, and doing some calibrations, it was finally time to do some quicker measurements. And after only 3 minutes, I recorded all the coil quality values which to better visualize them, I put in the same graph as the previous coil. It was interesting to see that their coil quality was about the same at higher frequencies, while the Litz wire coil featured a higher quality once again at a sweet spot between 50 to 60 kHz. 
So I picked a fitting capacitor and built up my final test system, which did once again exceed all the others with a distance of around 75cm and a short circuit current of 135mA. At the end I also tried calculating some efficiencies, which varied quite a bit but were overall way more promising looking than before. And with all my tests and measurements being completed so far, I think I made it clear why inductors or coils can be sometimes difficult to handle. But I hope you understand them a bit better now. And I will see how I will use this LCR meter to improve my system even more in the future. If you want to see that, then consider supporting me through Patreon, so that I can keep producing videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!